Thanks, Mang, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Esan, and um, today I'm going to talk about my research on full duplex wireless. Uh, as Mang mentioned, this is a this research is done in collaboration with researchers at NEC Labs, uh, Amir Khojastepur and Kartik Sandarasan. So current commercially available wireless devices, such as your mobile device or Wi-Fi devices, operate in a half-duplex manner. In other words, um, a wireless device, such as a Wi-Fi uh, device, uh, cannot transmit and receive at the same time and on the same frequency band. For example, if a Wi-Fi access point has a packet to transmit to one client and it wants to receive a packet from another client, it has to do it on two different time slots. So for example, sending the packet first to one client and then receiving another packet from another client. Simultaneous transmission and reception on the same frequency band is a very hard problem because uh, the amount of interference caused by the transmitting antenna on the receiving antenna is very high. So for example, with Wi-Fi transmission power, uh, the self-interference signal is like billions of times stronger than the intended receive signal. So which needs to be canceled for correct full duplex operation. So the key innovation in our research is basically we introduce a design that enables a wireless device to send and receive multiple streams of data in a full duplex manner. So building a full duplex wireless device has uh, many applications in wireless networking. For example, a, a full duplex wireless device can potentially be used for traffic backhauling in point-to-point -point or point-to-multipoint applications, potentially doubling the spectral efficiency. Or a full duplex, full duplex operation can potentially be used in Wi-Fi access point, and uh, where basically it can potentially provide multifold increase, even higher than twice the capacity in Wi-Fi networks due to the multi-hop nature of, multi uh, of Wi-Fi deployments. And then it can also be used in cellular networks, for example, for uh, relaying or same band um, backhaul and uh, user access. Recent works basically have proposed several designs to enable full duplex operation with high uh, transmission power. Single antenna full duplex can, for example, be achieved by uh, designing an enhanced circulator. A circulator is a passive RF component that enables a, a device to transmit and receive uh, in a full duplex manner. However, because the circulator uses a single antenna for transmission and reception, the amount of self-interference operation is very low. So it can only be used for full duplex operation with low power communication. All other works basically uh, that are introduced in the literature, they use uh, different antennas for transmission and reception in order to benefit them from the path loss uh, for self-interference operation. So these works include uh, asymmetric placement of antennas as well as estimation of the self-interference channel and compensation of that. But the key issue with all these uh, uh, prior works is that they suffer from a scalability, meaning that they only enable single stream full duplex operation. So you can send one stream of data and receive another stream of data in a full duplex manner, but they don't easily scale to multiple stream operation. So the key differentiation between our work and all these prior work is that we build a uh, wireless device uh, which operates in a multi-stream full duplex fashion. So our um, Antenna, our cancellation approach is basically based on a symmetric placement of antennas. Now remember that the objective is basically to eliminate or cancel the self-interference which is caused by the transmitting antenna on the receiving antenna. So the way that we do this is basically by using a um, cancelling antenna and then placing it in such a way that the receiving antenna is in the middle of the two antennas. And then we feed that uh, cancelling antenna with an inverse of the uh, original signal by using passive RF components such as phase shifters. And then we refer to this type of cancellation as transmit cancellation. And uh, the idea is that by using this uh, self uh, cancelling antenna and placing it correctly, you can create an inverse of the signal uh, and uh, with the hope that the two are going to cancel each other out at the receiving antenna and enable full duplex operation. So this, uh, we refer to this uh, design as a transmit cancellation. Now, uh, the same idea can be also used at the receiver, where instead of having a single antenna, you can potentially have uh, two receiving antennas and placing them uh, basically at the same distance from the transmitting antennas. 
And then again, uh, the same methodology can be used at the receiver. So the two uh, signals that are received by the two receiving antennas are going to be combined with one another in a manner uh, to eliminate further the, the amount of interference. And then we refer to this um, type of cancellation as receive cancellation. So basically in our design, in order to have a, a single stream full duplex operation, meaning you transmit one stream and receive another stream in a full duplex manner, we need to have four antennas. And uh, this uh, design has two key properties having uh, this um, transmit cancellation on top of receive cancellation. Uh, first, it can be shown that uh, the, the two levels of cancellation provide additive gains, uh, meaning that having uh, transmit cancellation on top of receiving cancellation can further reduce the amount of self-interference. Now, the second key property of this design is that it easily scales to a MIMO system. So MIMO is one of the main features of all the upcoming next generation uh, wireless networks, such as, for example, 11N or 11A Wi-Fi networks or LTE advanced cellular type of networks. So for example, in, order, in our design, in order to have a system which supports um, transmitting three streams of data and receiving three streams of data, we need to have 12 antennas in order to have a 3x3 MIMO plus full duplex system. So we, we have implemented uh, and prototyped our uh, full duplex MIMO system on the WARP platform. Uh, this is an FPGA platform which basically allows us to easily prototype advanced techniques such as, for example, MIMO full duplex, and it provides complete programmability and observability across different layers. So we have implemented our uh, full duplex MIMO system called MIDU, as well as a half duplex uh, MIMO system on this platform. And then uh, we have tested it in outdoor open space environments. Uh, and then assuming that we have only a, uh, and then in our implementation, we only have a narrow band signal, only a 625 kilohertz signal. And then as our metric for comparison among different schemes, like comparing full duplex versus MIMO, uh, we measure the signal to noise ratio as reported by the work boards, or we calculate the corresponding uh, Shannon capacity which is basically um, an upper bound on the throughput that can be achieved by different modulation and coding schemes. So there are many questions about uh, this design, such as, for example, if this design is stable or not, and what are going to be the impact of this antenna placement on far field users. And then uh, other questions like when evaluating the performance, like what are the cancellation values that you would achieve with the single level or the two level, or how does it scale when you have a MIMO system? And then uh, finally, how does it compare uh, compared to a legacy MIMO node? So in this talk, I'll talk about the cancellation results that we get, two level and MIMO, and then I'll do uh, some small comparison uh, with a single link uh, MIMO. So the first issue that uh, we want to investigate here is to evaluate what are the uh, cancellation results that you would get only if you have transmit cancellation. So the experiment that we do is that we put uh, two antennas. Uh, T1 is the original antenna and T1 prime is the cancelling antenna. And we want to measure what's the self-interference suppression or the, the amount of cancellation at six different locations, which are shown as uh, these black dots here in this blue line. So for each of these uh, six different uh, black dots, we basically measure the amount of uh, cancellation. And the results are plotted in this graph, uh, in which the y-axis corresponds to the cancellation results in dB. And the uh, x-axis is basically the transmit power of the original signal. So there are two things uh, that we observe from these graphs. First is that the amount of self-interference cancellation does not depend on the transmit power. So it's relatively unchanged with the amount of transmit power. And the second key observation is that uh, a single level of antenna cancellation can provide something between 22 to 30 dB of self-interference suppression. Now, the next uh, key issue that we want to investigate is uh, whether having received cancellation on top of transmit cancellation is additive or not. So we perform an experiment in which we place the antennas in uh, this way, and uh, we basically measure the amount of cancellation. And what we observe is that basically the model prediction is not valid, and uh, because some of the assumptions that we make in order to prove our theorem that the two levels of cancellations are additive are too strong. 
Now, in order to uh, modify that and modify the design, we basically need to uh, basically put uh, these phase shifters uh, similarly on each of these paths in order to take into account the phase shifter induced in insertion and loss. So basically, in our complete system, we need to have four similar uh, phase shifters on each of these paths. So now, with this uh, redesigned prototype, uh, then we measure the amount of uh, self-interference two-level transmit and receive cancellation. And what we observe is that when you, you have uh, these two levels and with this new design, you can achieve up to 45 dB. So something between 40 to 45 dB cancellation, which means that the two levels of cancellation are indeed additive. Now, uh, the next issue that we want to investigate is uh, MIMO. So what we looked so far is what basically this design, where we have a single stream full duplex and we measured the amount of self-interference cancellation. So the next uh, issue we want to investigate is uh, what happens when we have multiple streams of data transmitting. So for example, in a uh, three transmitting MIMO system, we have three uh, streams of data transmitting. And so what is the amount of uh, cancellation when we have multiple streams of data transmitting? So in order to measure uh, the self-interference value in this scenario, we repeat the experiment by uh, measuring the amount of self-interference cancellation when we have only R1 and R1 prime as our receiver. And then we change the location of this R1, R1 prime and look at uh, two other different locations, R2, R2 prime and R3, R3 prime. So in our design, basically all of these TIs are transmitting and um, uh, R1, R1 prime, or R3, R3 prime are the receiving antennas. So basically, uh, what we observe in this graph, the uh, green bars on, uh, on the right, basically we see that uh, now when we have multiple streams of data transmitting, uh, the self-interference cancellation is something about 35 to 40 dB. So it means that at least uh, up to having three pairs of uh, transmitting MIMO pairs, uh, it's still working uh, in an acceptable manner. So uh, the next issue that we want to investigate is to basically uh, do some comparison uh, with MIMO. So in our design, as you can observe, we are using uh, multiple antennas. And so the same resources can potentially be used for doing MIMO. So one natural uh, question is, how does this system compare to a MIMO system? So uh, when comparing a full duplex system to a, a half duplex MIMO system, our primary focus is on performance. But other metrics could potentially be considered for a fair comparison, such as size, cost, and complexity. So we introduced basically two models uh, that are of practical interest and in order to do a fair comparison between full duplex and MIMO. In the antenna conserved model, or the AC model, uh, the full duplex node has the same number of antennas as a legacy MIMO node. And so it, re it represents the case when a, a full duplex device is realized within a legacy MIMO node. So in this case, as you can um, observe, um, it doesn't show the full potential of full duplex because half of the uh, RF chains that are present in a legacy MIMO node are not going to, going to be used in a uh, uh, full duplex, corresponding full duplex node. In the RF chain conserved model, the full duplex node has the same number of RF chains as the legacy MIMO node. Uh, but it can potentially have more number of antennas. And so, uh, for example, if your legacy MIMO node has uh, two antennas and two pairs of RF chains, uh, the corresponding full duplex node can use all of these uh, available RF chains to transmit up to four streams of data. So uh, the results in this uh, graph basically contrast the performance of uh, full duplex and MIMO in a single link by comparing their corresponding capacities. So uh, the blue graph here corresponds to the uh, full duplex node in the RF chain conserved model. And uh, the red graph here corresponds to the full duplex uh, with the antenna conserved model. And the green graph corresponds to the half duplex node. So what we observe here is that when we have the RF chain conserved model, the blue graph, uh, we are roughly all, always get the, like two, two times the capacity compared to the half duplex node, uh, which is the green uh, graph. And then uh, when we have the antenna conserved model, uh, up to six number of antennas, the two systems perform similarly, when as when we have a higher number of antennas, uh, MIMO starts to saturate, whereas uh, full duplex can give you additional gains. 
So basically, uh, it turns out that irrespective of the model that you have in mind, there are regions in which uh, full duplicates can provide high gains. So in summary, basically, uh, in this talk, uh, and in this research, we introduced MIDU, which is the first form of full duplex wireless system, and it can potentially provide a multifold increase in network capacity. And then, uh, since it uh, enables full duplex in addition to MIMO, it can be used in all the next generation wireless networks, such as cellular networks, uh, LTE Advanced, or uh, 11N uh, Wi Fi networks. And then uh, we made our design basically enables two stages of antenna cancellation with additive gains, which means that it can provide higher amount of self-interference operation, potentially providing full duplex operation and enabling full duplex operation in uh, femto Wi-Fi or Pico uh, cellular towers. And then uh, we also built a prototype of MIDU, which showcased the joint operation of uh, MIMO plus full duplex. So thanks.